We're in Philadelphia. We are in Philadelphia. That's right, Philadelphia. The city of brotherly love. The other city that compares itself to New York, well, New York doesn't even know it exists. This historic American town is the home of federalism, and while Independence Hall was all booked up, I took the opportunity to see as many other sites as I could, including the Constitution Center. The Second Bank of the United States Portrait Gallery. Washington Square, home of the Eternal Flame. Historic Philadelphia City Hall. Whatever this big chair is. And of course, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It's so hard now. It ain't been day. Gotta lie down. <coughs> the main event was Carpenter's Hall, the building where the first Continental Congress met. It's still privately owned and operated today and I've got a history date with its executive director, Michael Norris. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Welcome. I'm Rob from Tea Party Tonight. I'm Michael Norris, executive director of the Carpenters Company. Can you show me around? Yeah, sure. Okay. So this is Carpenters Hall, built in the early 1770s by the Carpenters Company of Philadelphia. The company was founded as a guild mm -hmm. of master builders in the 18th century through a complicated uh, series of events and some political machinations, um, the hall was chosen to uh, be the site for the First Continental Congress in the fall of 1774. And that was in this first floor here, right? That's correct. So this is where it actually happened, where the yes. First Continental Congress That's actually correct. happened. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty small. <laughs> right. It's not a large space, but something to keep in mind is that um, the full Congress was not meeting in full session, mm -hmm. you know, all day long, right? So there were committees, you know, that would meet off site, you know, private room at the city tavern, what have you, or even some, you know, the lot, the rooms that, you know, the committee chair was lodging in or whatever. So um, it was unusual for the all 56 delegates to be in the same room at the same time. Yes. Uh, so, but yes, they did, uh, they did manage to, to squeeze themselves in here and of course people were smaller then too so yes. <laughs> which is something else yeah. to keep in mind i still am <laughs> so this first story is open to the general public yes but i understand there's also a second story which is not that is correct we have some meeting rooms our company library our staff offices are all up there can i see it um, i think we can arrange that all right great let's go Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so this is the beginning of our library collection. We'll see more of it in a second when we go into the library proper. Come on in. I thought that was the library. <laughs> this is the library. Yeah, yeah, that's just the uh, overture. This is the, this is the real thing. Wow. So what kinds of books are these? So we have a really eclectic collection. The idea was that it was a functioning lending library for the members of the Carpenters Company and their families. Hmm. So clearly we have books about architecture and construction and building, you know, as a, as a professional association. Mm -hmm. But there were, there's also a wide variety of other topics, history, fiction, books for young people, um, you know, anything that, um, 
would be of interest. Um, this bottle is actually really fun because it is bottle uh, soft and hard. So <laughs> it was. A, it's a bottle of beer, mm -hmm. so that's fun. Yeah. Um, and it was given to us by the London Carpenters Company, um, and it is allegedly beer that was brewed from grain that was grown on the estate in England that belonged to General Cornwallis. Oh, wow. So, and for those of you who forget, uh, General Cornwallis was the uh, general, British general who sort of blew the war mm -hmm. uh, for the other side. And so the, our friends in London thought that that was kind of funny. This box is actually still used by the company today. Um, it's the way that we vote new members um, oh, wow. into, the, into the company. So. The, um, the membership of the Carpenters Company is self-perpetuating. Mm -hmm. You have to be um, nominated by another member, a current member of the company to join. And uh, at our quarterly meetings, when new members get um, put up for nomination, this box gets passed around. And uh, it's you know, sort of the old school way of voting. If you're, you, know, you, you put your marble in if you're in favor, and you don't if you're not. So the number of marbles at the end tells us uh, if the new member was voted on. Wow, that's really cool. When, <laughs> when does this box go back so, to? Uh, this, uh, particular, so this method has been used since the beginning mm -hmm. of the company. This box, we believe, dates from the early um, 20th century. So, you know, they had to replace it over, over the centuries. And sorry if I broke it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I could get in? Uh, well, it depends. Are you an architect, an engineer, or a builder? You'd have to really stretch the definition <laughs> of those things for me to qualify, right. I think. <laughs> right. So that's why I'm not a member either. Mm. So uh, that those uh, from our original bylaws, you know, um, define who can be members. So, mm. um, so even so, to this day, our members are not just you know random anybody's. They're folks who are specifically working professionals in the building. Um, industry. Uh, so this is our Dalkeith room. Dalkeith is the town in Scotland that mm -hmm. Robert Smith, who was the master builder of Carpenters Hall, was from. He was actually one of the leading master builders um, in all of the colonies uh, in the 18th century. So he designed a number of places here in Philadelphia, but also um, sites in Williamsburg, um, Princeton. So he was pretty prolific. Um, and this room is dedicated sort of to his memory um, so it shows some of our period furniture um, and portraiture, you know, to sort of evoke the feeling of um, what a room um, in Scotland, or frankly here at, the, at that time, would, would be like. So, um, but what's even more interesting is that in the Revolutionary period, this room housed uh, the Library Company of Philadelphia, uh, which was founded by Benjamin Franklin, you know, one of the many things he founded mm -hmm. uh, in Philadelphia. And um, he, said he lived in Philadelphia. Was, <laughs> that rumor has it. it. Yeah, yeah, no. I, just, the, I think of uh, him right. as a Boston guy, but I guess he lived well, here too. Right. Yeah, you know, he had to run away and find his, uh, you know, his true calling here. But yeah. um, uh, so the library company was housed here. It was actually here during the First Continental Congress. So while the delegates were meeting downstairs, uh, they had access to um, the collection of books up, up here. Uh, that uh, that Franklin and the other shareholders of the library company had uh, had put together. So, um, and then um, Franklin, uh, who had recently returned, so Franklin was not at the First Continental Congress. He was still in England at that time, um, but he um, returned to Philadelphia in 1775. Um, and obviously became very active in the uh, in the war effort and the independence effort. So one of the things that he did in secret at that time, but we now know about, is that he um, organized a series of secret meetings um, between uh, the the Patriots, um, and I don't mean the football team. Uh, They've been gotten in trouble yeah, for some right. secret meetings. Yeah. Um, but um, so uh, Franklin organized these meetings between a, a, a spy, an envoy who came over from France, again in secret. The war, this was December of 1775, so the war had already started, so they clearly didn't want the British to know that this was happening, but an emissary came over from France to Philadelphia, 
Franklin organized the meetings. It was him and John Jay and this, this guy from France whose name was Bon Boudoir. Mm -hmm. And they met here um, over a couple of nights, um, again, in secret after dark, uh, to discuss the possibility of France becoming uh, America's ally um, in the revolution. So um, that, of course, subsequently happened and there was a formal you know alliance with France that led to their participation in the war which of course was you know hugely significant in helping us to win the war but the the seeds of that uh, diplomatic alliance really happened right here um, in this room so this room that I'm sitting in now is where Benjamin Franklin convinced France to be our ally in the Revolutionary War? Uh, they, there were many other meetings, but yes. So my butt is in basically the same vicinity as the place that diplomat Benjamin Franklin's butt was when he was negotiating with France. That is true. The chairs are different, but, uh, but yes. Yeah. But all these years later, butts remain relatively the same. They haven't changed much. <laughs> I'm not sure I should be allowed in here. <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy because, you know, my office is right off of this room. Wow. So um, just to sort of come to work every day and feel like, yeah. wow, this is a, you know, an, an active vital space. But it's also this amazing repository uh, of history is pretty cool. What are some other uh, ways that this space was used? Yeah, so we, it was used very often. Um, as a, as a bank, so the first bank of the United yeah. States, uh, you know, which Alexander Hamilton started um, as our first treasury uh, secretary, mm -hmm. uh, was housed here uh, while their building was being built um, yeah. across the street. Did they give out lollipops? Do you know <laughs> yeah, that? I don't know. That's, that may not have. Yeah, mm, that, that doesn't show up in the record. So there's a long connection to the history of, of finance and the mm -hmm. economy um, because the first bank was in this building, the sec actually the second bank of the United States, the Bank of Pennsylvania, the Bank of North America, right? So there were multiple banks who used uh, the first floor uh, for offices. Carpenters Hall was the first privately funded preservation project in America. Old South Meeting House in Boston was the second privately funded preservation project in America. And so uh, as a Bostonian, I have to ask you, do you think you're better than me? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so this building obviously is a really important building in the history of the American Revolution. But why does someone who doesn't necessarily see themselves reflected in that history or feel invested in that history, uh, why is this building important to people like that? Um, I think because it reflects the sort of the duality of, of what was happening back then and really what hap still happens today in our, in our politics um, and in our sort of public discourse. So uh, clearly, we hosted the first Continental Congress, the Founding Fathers, right, a bunch of rich white dudes, right, all of that is true, um, and a lot of good things came from that. But there was also really active citizen engagement in people who were for or against um, independence or not, and um, many of those folks were women, many of those folks uh, were um, freed uh, African Americans in Philadelphia, and so that um, sort of richness of, of political engagement and, and citizen activism was very prevalent then, and I think that's part of the story that not everyone um, really pays attention to. We just think it's like dudes and wigs sitting around a table, right? Um, but there was very much a sense of people, and because they were defining or trying to define a new republic, uh, the role of individual citizens was highlighted and, and heightened, right? So people knew that this was an opportunity to sort of reshape the way they were governed and the way individual citizens could participate in their, in their own governance. Um, and, you know, all of that is still relevant today, right? So we're still arguing about some of those questions. Thank you so much for showing me. Oh, a pleasure. Yeah, this has been great. Uh, what is coming up next for Carpenter's Hall? Uh, well, 
We are three years away from 2024, which is our uh, big anniversary year. So it is not only the 300th anniversary of the Carpenters Company itself, uh, it's also the 250th anniversary of the First Continental Congress. So we are planning a lot of cool stuff. Uh, to celebrate those milestones. Um, the one that I'm most excited about is that we are going to be, instead of doing a traditional sort of reenactment of the First Continental Congress, we're actually doing um, a Young People's Continental Congress. There were 56 delegates at the First Continental Congress, and uh, through the magic of coincidence, there are actually 56 states and territories um, now in the, in the United States. So we're gonna have one student from each territory or state come here so it'll match exactly the number of people which will be really fun but it'll be um, in a very contemporary context right where they're talking about what young people think today about government um, and democracy and how we make it better it sounds amazing yeah yeah so come back in 2024 and please if you ever make it to boston yeah. come oh, to uh, our... i don't know boston yeah it's the, the traffic <laughs> is terrible thank you so much though my pleasure thank you mm -hmm.